listening to me. I come by the blood of Jesus. I come by the blood of Jesus. I come by the blood that speaks mercy. I come by the blood that speaks grace. We come by the blood. 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 And with a free land that cross the brother. Delighted to be back with you in studio this beautiful Saturday morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Nalong Urechuku and you are watching The Strange Acts of God. This is the NSV Willie Testimony Show where I get the chance to sit down with the experts to go over the wonders of God that we got a chance to see and to hear in the course of the week on NSPPD. And for that person tuning in for the very first time and wondering, what exactly is NSPPD? Where have you been? NSPPD is the new season's prophetic prayers and declarations brought to you by Streams of Joy International, the home of what God cannot do does not exist. Catch up with us weekdays, 7 a.m. Nigerian time, across all of our social media handles as we continue to revolutionize our world through the power of prayer. Today on The Strange Acts of God, I am joined by a dear friend of the show. He is our favorite family physician. He's a consultant, family physician. Dr. Kelechi Oyeri is in the house to put us through today's lineup. Super, super <laughs> delighted to be back with you, Thank Dr. Kelechi. Thank you Kelechi. so much. You. <laughs> yes, it's been like forever. Yes, it has been. Welcome to Thank the show. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We have five testimonies mm. requiring your expert opinion <laughs> today. <laughs> Let's quickly just take a recap and see what happened right. to this week on NSPPD. This week on NSPPD, miracle, miracle marriage, marriage in, in 11, 11 days. days. Wow. <laughs> wow. Leave to remain in the UK mm. granted in eight months. months. Hallelujah. Miraculous wow. deliverance from, from death. death. Profound testimony mm. that was. Glory to God. Restored from coma, coma. cancer reversed. Failed organs revived. revived. Thank you, Lord. Five years barrenness mm. broken after three failed IVFs. Hepatocellular Cellular carcinoma. Okay. Reversed. reversed. <laughs> Glory to God. Restored from, from coma. coma. Thank you, Jesus. Fifteen years, years of barrenness broken. broken. Wow. Some wow. Some restored from coma yeah. again. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Reversed. Cervical. Intraepithelial neoplasia. Wow. <laughs> Gone. Supernatural business, business preservation. preservation. Profound testimony that was. Negative pattern broken in the course of the week. Wow. wow. Some awesome. huge, huge, huge awesome testimonies. testimonies. Wow. With some big, big, you know, names. The names. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The, 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 you saw the 11 days marriage 11, 11 days. days you know you know i actually listened to that testimony and uh -huh. i was like okay how does this work right but when she now it's like after the marriage that my marriage is beautiful wow. as in the way she was talking uh -huh. about the marriage uh -huh. it was uh -huh. just so exciting and, you know papa <laughs> asked a very you know profound question for those that are so worried for them yes how many Weeks did, or did, months did Adam date did he before? <laughs> <laughs> or even you know when yeah. um, Isaac was when we were looking for a child a, 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 for uh -huh. a wife for Isaac? Yes, yes, How yes. many days? How many did, years yes. did they date for? God is involved. God is involved. And so they've been supernaturally set. Exactly. Glory to God. <laughs> Five testimonies up for review this beautiful Saturday. On the lineup today, we have a testimony from Sister Ijoma testifying from Abia State, Nigeria, strange affliction reversed. A second testimony from Sister Mfon, testifying from Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. We are demystifying strange afflictions <laughs> today. Where are you watching us from? We'd like to know in the comment section. Click on the share button if you're yet to. We'll be right back.
So when those maggots were pulled out from different parts of her body and it was 11 pieces. So after pulling them out, they were alive, big maggots. After some days, those maggots didn't die. My name is Ijoma. I'm making this video from Abia State. I have a daughter, a daughter of 22 years and she told me that she has, she has these boils all over her body and um, I and all of our, our classmates and our schoolmates, they thought it was um, chicken pox. So she, I told her to go and take drugs for chicken pox after some time she came back and she told me from school, she came back from school and she told me that the pain is too much, it's too excruciating. We tried all we could, gave her all the medications and it, it was getting worse. So one day we discovered that the boys has movement in it and those movements we tried to know what was inside we couldn't we now use my husband have to use hot water to touch on the mat with a towel to touch on the mat of those boys and lo and behold it was it was um maggots so my husband has to use towel and hot water to pull out all those maggots so when those maggots were pulled out from different parts of her body and it was 11 pieces so after pulling them out they were alive big maggots alive they after some days those maggots didn't die but when i started the uh, we have to go to the hospital and they said she should be placed on antibiotic injections and they will start the treatment as we were treating this wound and the thing was getting worse. One day I have a brother who now sent me the link of oh Lord show me mercy. So I have to pray that oh Lord show me mercy with my daughter. We prayed and prayed. I have to pray with my heart. After that prayer that day, the next morning, this wound started drying up. The face changed. It started drying up, drying up, drying up. This wound that has very big, deep hole cleared off. Thank you, Jesus, for your work. Your legs uh, look like they poured hot water on you. Uh, and that's the only way I can describe what I am seeing uh, by the power that raised Jesus uh, from the dead. Uh, I decree, uh, let it be reversed right now. My name is Kufuan Black Duke. I'm doing this record from Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Pastor Cherry, I just want to thank God for his mercies in my life. Sometime I pray 2023. I was trying to walk through my car and I realized that I felt some itches on my leg so I had to just quickly itch. So later that day when I got home, I realized that spot I itched got swollen. So we observed for a day and it was worse than what it was the previous day. So my husband took me to the hospital, We the doctor saw me and he commenced treatment. Um, so he placed me on some treatment for five days. I realized it was getting worse every day we got to the hospital to take the new treatment it got worse so I told my mom about it and she came around and saw it and said no 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 this wasn't just um, for hospital when she got some people in room, they said it was caliber built so um, they had to bring some traditional people to start the first treatment set the second treatment it, it got worse the third person came just trying each week we're bringing in new people new people new people past the chair at a point my leg was bringing out maggots it was getting rotten my husband was concerned my mom everyone was concerned we kept praying so i just recalled i said okay we've tried medical it wasn't no result we've tried traditional persons but four persons past the chair each week one person so that means automatic, automatically four weeks i was bedridden i didn't go anywhere i was always carried to the toilet you know because my legs got extremely fat very big and red so i decided i recalled i had a friend on my whatsapp mrs lillian so i, I clicked it clicked on the link on her status and i joined an sppd step pray at the altar of fire at a point um, two days after the day I joined, Pastor Jerry mentioned my case. He said there was a, there's someone that um, 
it's as though one part of your body water hot water was poured on it i don't know who you are your legs look like they poured hot water on you that's the only way i can describe what i am seeing like they poured hot water on you they are big big things all over all over if you are the one put it on the live stream by the power that rest jesus from the dead i decree let it be reverse right now i said oh this is me i click into i said praying and pastor jerry that day automatically my legs that were swollen i read automatically got cold i felt a very cold sensation from my head down to my to my toes and i started screaming jesus jesus i can feel the coldness of my body and everybody came to me all my great grateful pastor jerry every day i tell people about what god did for me in the altar of fire every second imagine if there was nothing like an SPPD. what would have happened to me hey jesus so by now i would have been gone Pastor Jerry, thank you so much. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for helping us to communicate to God directly. Since I joined this platform, my life has changed. My husband's life has changed. I keep telling people, I tell everyone I see. Thank you so much, Pastor Jerry. I am super grateful. We love you so much. All over the world, we love you. You are our hero. Please do not give up on us. Please. Thank you so much. What God cannot do does not exist. Oh, wow. He is indeed yes. our hero, isn't he? Yeah. He is fighting is. battles. He's jumping to the front line to fight battles that he mm -hmm. knows nothing yes, about yes. on behalf of millions I, of us for me i just saw a grateful heart right she didn't know how best to express uh, how she felt and all she could just you know express her love and her you know appreciation yes, to yes. the to the angel right. that god has used to you know bring, bring healing, healing deliverance, deliverance exactly to, to strangers to strangers to Glory strangers to god. and then the unifying factor uh -huh. Because right now, herself, her husband, they are all on the altar of fire. Yes. And their lives has changed. Wow. So it's, uh, it's quite phenomenal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Profound testimonies. Mm -hmm. Margot infestation wow. in our first ah, testifier. Wow. I mean, this is uh, quite strange. I've seen mm -hmm. it uh, maybe once in mm -hmm. real life. <laughs> and I'm wondering what is responsible for skin maggot in infestation what is responsible i'm sure for that? i'm sure that was creepy for you right very much so very much so. i can imagine very much so yeah. moving sensation yes in the body i must have been very creepy like something Ooh. from a horror movie <laughs> you know well wow. the thing is that like, it's not uncommon even though it's rare right. especially um but it's common in the um, sub-saharan africa okay um and then with this our um, you know climate change we now find out we have increasing rainfalls so you find out that there's more of some of these um, tropical illnesses, you mm. know, springing forth. Mm. So what happens is that um, there are particular flies. You have the butt fly, you have the tumbo fly. So what happens is that they cause their eggs. So the, it's actually called cutaneous myasis, M-Y-A-S-I-S. Mm. Okay. So there are other forms of myasis that you could have. You could have cutaneous myasis, you have oropharyngeal myasis and cavitatory myasis. So what just means is that there is a um, lava of a fly mm. in the skin. Mm. So how does it get there? So it depends on what is causing or what is carrying the, 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 the egg. Mm. So you have the butterfly, you have the tumbo fly. Now, for the butterfly, what the butterfly does is that it's a fly, so it attaches itself probably to like um, a flying up like a mosquito, mm. and then attaches to the belly of the mosquito and lays its egg there. Mm. So when the mosquito comes to feed, the mosquito now perches on the human skin, mm. and there lays the egg now drops on the human skin and then penetrates into the skin. Oh. Wow. So when it penetrates into the skin, it now goes in there and hatches and forms 
the lava. Ooh. The other part, the tumbo fly, that one is like what the fly does is that it just looks for dry surfaces. Right. And then now lays its egg. So you find people who now spread their clothes on the floor mm. or probably have to lie down on one thing on the, on the ground. So they now get exposed to the egg. So when the egg now uh, patches to the human skin, or if there's an open wound, it penetrates the wound and oh, enters yeah. in, and through the process of metamorphosis, it now forms the lava. So it's the lava that we're seeing, which are the worms ah. that we saw creeping out of the, oh. out of the, out of the child. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this has nothing to do with personal hygiene. Well, it does. Has in a, some in, way. In some, in some way, it has to do with personal hygiene. Of because your environment. Exactly, of your environment. And um, of course, like we said, you know, where you spread your clothes, um, especially where, um, um, it, it, it has a lot. It, mm. it has a particular, but in mm. situations like this where probably a mosquito. <laughs> mm. The mosquito. Ah, no. So that one doesn't have anything to do with personal hygiene. Yeah. Yes, because you are, you're, you're just there and then you now have this mosquito now latches onto you and then, you know, drops the egg there. Okay. So. <laughs> wow. So 11, they brought out 11 mm. maggots from her body. And I mean, I can see that picture. And, yes. Um, I mean, it's quite, it's quite, it's mm. quite, I mean, <laughs> ah, it's quite disturbing. But <laughs> what I want to know is why was, you know, she having some kind of drug resistance, even after bringing it out and putting her on medication, you know, the sores and the wounds refused to dry up. You know, the thing is that because um, what the worms do is that while they are there, they keep burrowing in the skin. Mm. And they cause some form of inflammatory reactions. Mm. And they cause, eventually cause cellulitis. So right. the thing is that, number one, first things first, depending on how long they've been there, the degree of cellulitis would mm. all determine how much of um, what treatment plan and how long you're going to treat and when the wounds are going to heal. Mm. So even after removing, so what happens is that, the, um, of course, the method of treatment is that you could use petroleum jelly. Use oil over the, over the surface where the flies are. You know, initially, uh -huh. they thought it was chicken pox. Right, they thought it was chicken pox. So that is just the inflammatory reaction, the inflammation. Uh -huh. The skin now has a dome shaped like what you see in chicken pox right. until it busts open. Uh -huh. So in such situations, what happens is that when you recognize that there's a lava or that this is what a cutaneous myasis like we are, we, we say it is. So what happens is that you could get jelly over the skin at the area where the, um, the, the lava is, is burrowing and then it suffocates the lava. Mm. It suffocates the lava so it becomes very easy to either use a forcep and pull it out okay. or just press and get it out. Okay. Now the thing is this, already, just like I said, inflammatory changes have already taken causing cellulitis. Right. So at that point in time, of course, the inflammatory reaction will have to subside over a period of time with antibiotics, anti-inflammatory agents, and other, yeah. Right. Yeah. So a second testifier, she called her condition Calabar Belt. What, what do you call it as a doctor? <laughs> I, you know, when she said it was Calabar Belt, my first thought was like, okay, is she talking about Calabar swelling? But um, calabar swelling, something yeah, calabar there's something swelling? called calabar swelling, which is not acid. medically though. Yeah, medically. Really? Yes. It's wow. it's it's a it's also a cutaneous infestation with a particular worm mm. called the lower lower. But I that is not what it is because that would cause some kind of nodules, subcutaneous nodules on the skin. Mm. That is calabar swelling. Really? Now, but she said this is calabar belt. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> so, but what I see here is basically cellulitis. Okay, so this is this cellulitis. is cellulitis. So this is what oh, I wow. see here, and you could see that the the skin and the subcutaneous tissues have been affected, and that's why you have this whole inflammatory changes that is going taking place in the legs. She did mention that maggots were also coming out of her leg at some point. It is it's a possibility. Wow. It's a very big possibility because what happens is that inflammation, the process of inflammation, there's reduced blood supply to those areas which could be secondarily infected by any or anything, by the eggs of any of those worms or a worm 
which could go in there and start um, um, manifest as my God. Right, right, out. right. So it's a possibility. Again, she was bedridden for over a month. Mm. Now she said she had done, you know, the whole hospital rounds and she wasn't getting better. And then she went, you know, traditional means. She tried traditional medicine. Are you opposed to traditional medicine as a doctor? I'm not totally opposed to traditional medicine as a doctor. Uh -huh. And uh, because one of the things you need to do, there's something called complementary medicine, okay. where a bit of traditional medicine and then also can complement some of the um, meds, things that we use. Okay. You know, there was this, there was this time, there's this, a friend, this um, a man that came in from the UK and he had gastroenteritis. Mm -hmm. He was passing florid stools. He was like, oh, he, we, we gave all the antibiotics that we uh -huh. could. And then the guy was not getting any better. Right. So he was always, he was like, doc, make this thing stop. Make right. this thing stop. Right. And I told him, okay, I have one um, um, grandmother's recipe. He said, what is it? I said, we could use scent leaf. <laughs> wow. In our, in, down here in our local parlance, uh -huh. we call it in Chao. Yes. And he said, Will it work? I said, it's going to work. Uh -huh. Okay, now, then go ahead and get it for me. Right. He's lived all his life in the UK. And right. he just came in for a project in, uh, in, in Nigeria. And we washed the scent leaf mm -hmm. and drained out the water. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know how bitter it was. Mm -hmm. But he, because he needed a solution, he drank this thing. And by the next, he drank it in wow. the evening. By morning, it was dry. <laughs> wow, wow. He never had to pass, wow. go to the toilet again. So these recipes or these regimens, they work. But the only problem there is that the effect, how is it metabolized? We do mm. not know. What is the effect on the kidneys? What mm. is the effect on different organs to which some of these things are metabolized? So if, since we cannot be able to like predict their effects right. on the areas, on the organs to, by which they are excreted, mm -hmm we are very careful about their use. Right, right. So these two patients, these two testifiers had tried and tried to no avail, you know, months and months, and, you know, the wound wasn't healing. <clears throat> what is the typical lifespan, you know, for recovery? What's the recovery period for this ailment? You know, the thing is that um, cellulitis usually caused either by staphylococcus or streptococcus. Uh -huh. So now the thing is, is, one of the things that is very important is what the risk, what are the person's risk factors? Right. Very important. Okay. One, obesity is a risk factor. Uh. Anemia is a risk factor. Okay. Diabetes is a risk factor. Mm -hmm. Having peripheral arterial disease is a risk factor. Mm. So when there's any of these risk factors, it prolongs duration of healing. Mm. And then most importantly, the extent of the cellulitis. Right. So the bigger the extent of the cellulitis, the longer it will take ah. for the cellulitis to heal. Also, if there's any of these background risk factors that we've talked about, also it's going to typically affect, then if you do not have the ad effective medication, the sensitivity of the drugs to the particular um, strain of if, uh, right. um, um, bacteria right. that is causing it. You could right. be hitting with the wrong medication right. and that could cause... And that's why it's important to do a culture. A culture. Mm. So what happens is that you mm. take a culture and then do a culture and a sensitivity mm. pattern so mm. as to be able to like adfect, adequately recognize what type of medication will be effective and then you hit and then you should be able to like get some results. Wow. Yeah. Months being carried on the back both of her legs, cellulitis, mm. maggots all over the body. For our first testifier, one day on the altar of fire, mm. the word came forth, and that same day, it dried up completely. Mm -hmm. The second testifier, she clicked on the link, she saw it on someone's status. The next day, dried up completely. Those are, those are, that's phenomenal. Wow. Because the point is this, looking at this leg, you will know for sure that it will take a period of time. Uh -huh. Wound healing is not something that happens in a day. Yes, overnight. Wound, there's, it, there's nowhere in mm. medicine mm. that you say that a wound heals overnight. Mm. Now, if we had this level of er erythema, and mm. then by the next day, of course, you know, if you look at the subsequent picture that she uh -huh. projected you could notice that that wound had dried up glory had dried up glory. so there's no place ah. there's nothing i don't know i don't know what you're going to use
to be able to like cause that level of drying up right, right. in medicine. Right. So as far as I'm concerned, this is spontaneous. This spontaneous. This overnight mm, healing mm, is mm. nothing but the hand of God. Glory to in God. It. Glory yes. to God. On a lighter note, <laughs> we always see first timers, second yes. timers. They click on the link. Yes. Instant healing. Click on the link. Instant healing. God is amazing. God is amazing. He has welcome packs for welcome all of Welcome packs for all of them. <laughs> and you know, they are coming with this um, expectation. Expectation. The expectation that become, you know, so for, so for some have been there waiting right. for one thing. Probably they've become disillusioned, disenchanted. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Their faith has been watered down. Uh -huh. But these particular ones are coming with their faith in top gear, yeah. waiting to like receive, you know, they want to drink. They yes, just want they to like, want to it's like, it's like wanting to embrace yes, everything yes, 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 yes. that the word is bringing. Yes. And, and, and it's, it's like new converts as yes. well. Many times when new converts come to the faith, there's always something exciting it's, that it's, gets it them is. going. It so, gets um, them going. And again, you know, for some of us, the Bible will say to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been there, we've seen this, and now we need to press in for more things. For we more need to things. grow our faith, faith. We need to stretch and grow. So glory to God. Glory to God. And congratulations on your first time packages <laughs> are testifiers what a god cannot do does, does not, exist. not exist phenomenal <laughs> testimonies our second and third testimony we have our sister sister navan testifying from houston texas another testimony from Sister Adeze, testifying from Streams of Joy, Abuja. Our third testifier was healed from asthma, and our fourth testifier was restored from a coma following a severe asthmatic attack. We'll be right back. What God cannot do does not exist. My name is Nevan. God has magnified his mercies in my life. I had asthma for 40 years, and the Lord has totally healed me, and he broke a, a negative family pattern. Why did I say so? Like Pastor Jerry would say, diseases that run in the bloodline. My maternal grandma st started having asthma when a second wife was brought into the home. And she had what we call uh, status asthmaticus in medicine. That means she would have a very severe form of asthma and she could die in minutes if nothing was done. So she always required oxygen and had to always be referred to the teaching hospital in our state. So eventually my grandma left her matrimonial home and started to live just beside the teaching hospital because of her health condition. She eventually died of asthma and my mom started having asthma as an adult. I was born with asthma. So my childhood was terrible. Like anybody who knows asthma will, I, I always wondered why I was even alive because I had a terrible time. We managed asthma. My mom was a nurse, so she managed me and herself well. And I eventually became a pharmacist and to what, to the best I could, uh, we kept updating our therapy and managing the situation well. Because once a situation is explained to you, it's, it's something you just live with because it's a lifelong disease. I know as a teenager, after knowing this background from my home, I was spiritually sensitive enough to ask God that I didn't want it to run in my bloodline and I didn't want to die of an asthma attack. I joined NSPPD in um, 2021, sometimes towards the end of July, just before Pastor Jerry's birthday. And fast forward to the 30th of September that year, 2021, Pastor Jerry said something around um, one hour, 14 minutes. He said, um, I curse asthma. I don't know how many years you've been with asthma. Asthma die. Heaven said I should cause asthma. Ah. Heaven said I should cause asthma. Hey. Heaven said I should cause asthma. Hey. I don't care how many years hey. you have suffered hey. from asthma. Hey. I command asthma die. Hey. I, I looked around and I was like, could that be me? To clear my doubts, the next thing Pastor Jerry said was, I can see demonic allergies. Demonic allergies die. Heaven said I should cause allergies. Ah. Any form of allergy, any form of allergy of any kind, I command demonic allergies. Die. Pastor Jerry, NSPPDNs, those that know me will notice that whether it's raining, whether it's sunny, I could have Qatar all year round. I could have itches 
like I could just see a group of ants and my whole body would just well up. My eyes, my ears, my throat, my, my body, I could have breakouts, different things. I could just smell something on the street and off, I'm, I'm having an allergic reaction. It was so bad. Then again, the very next thing Pastor Jerry said was, I don't know what makes all your teeth to fall. I've never heard this before, uh, but there's a, a, an infirmity is causing all your teeth to fall off. Uh, all of your teeth are falling off. They are falling off. They are falling off. But uh, you are not old. You are not old. Uh, all your teeth, teeth are just falling off. Uh, this one will fall off. You wake up and this one will fall off. Uh, if you are the one, put it on the life uh, If you will not keep back your testimony, Mabara, the ones that are shaking uh, and they are threatening to fall off, uh, as your amen will thunder, I command them to firm up by fire. Amen. I have always had dental issues since I was a child. I can't tell you how many teeth I've lost, but just for an example, within the space of having three kids, I have lost four teeth. And it would just be random something. I could just be chewing on something and then my teeth will break off and then I'll have to pull it off. God worked on that. December 2021, I had an official assignment out of my state. So. I was being taken to the room where I was going to lodge and I just picked the smell of insecticide in the room. I was so sad. I was like, God, after this long flight, I won't rest for like another two hours because I have to stay out of this room till that smell is totally gone. If not, I will wake up in the night with a nightmare and of an asthma, like almost dying and I would wheeze and have a terrible attack. I told the housekeeper, please go and get new sheets. And I locked the door. I was still grumbling, removing my shoes, and I slept off Pastor Jerry. I woke up around 3 a.m. And I was, like, getting ready for an emergency, but nothing. I was not wheezing. Nothing was happening to me, Pastor Jerry. And that was how my journey with asthma ended. This was how God, the Lord that sees me, went back into the ancient things of my life, the mysteries, and... And, and started by clearing them. Happy birthday once again, Pastor Jerry. The whole of August is yours. And I want to ask NSPPDNs, please just say a prayer. Not just thank you, Papa. Say a prayer for Pastor Jerry. God bless you all. Amen. I was an asthmatic patient. And thank God for NSPPD prayer. If not, I will not be standing here today. My friend introduced me to NSPPD last year. She will send me the link and she will be like, Sherry, enter this, this prayer. I will tell her, please, I beg. She said, don't worry, Pastor is always, Papa is always praying about asthmatic people. And they are always giving their testimony. I will be like, no, I've gone through many, many streets. Some even give me some liquid to drink. Oh, do this one. Use salt and bait. Like I'm, like I'm done. So, and because of my health, I was born asthma, with asthma. But it became critical when I was in secondary school. So most times, I got oxygen. Through oxygen, I'll come back. Around May, I was talking with a friend of mine. Around 11 on the phone, I passed out. The rest was history. It was when I woke up, they started telling me what happened. This was what happened. I was talking, I passed out. So my friend knew about my condition. So he he started calling my neighbors. Like even the gates and um, the gate people at my estate, please rush to this girl's house. They had to break through the window to carry me out of my room, carry me to Evercare Hospital in Lekki. That was where I saw myself. They started calling my family. Luckily, my mom was in Lagos then. They came. When they brought me in, I was not really, like, they were trying everything possible to revive me. Nothing. They had to insert tube into my throat to infuse air so I could breathe. Nothing. My BP was zero. According to them, I was already getting cold from my feet. I was dead. Then my friend, Yudi Udamaka, thank God for her. She will always urge me to, and to go to NSPPD do this one. So she was the last person I called. I passed out. I regained myself because I was trying to get hold of my inhaler. I could not stand up. I had to just carry my phone. I called. I said, you did pray for me. That was the last thing I said. And I dropped my phone. 
So she said on Monday she killed him by name. And Papa mentioned it. He said that uh, somebody, your loved one, is in a critical condition. I see your loved one in the hospital. It's an emergency. They are looking for where they will put infusion. And they're saying everything has collapsed. Everything has collapsed. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. You are on with NSPPD right now. You are on with NSPPD right now. By the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Are you now? Let it be reversed. That was his exact word. So she called and she was like telling my mom, please, they should, because then they're already taking me to the ICU. So they can't allow more than two persons there. They said, beg the doctors, one person should take the phone to my ear. So I wasn't even breathing. The doctors were like, once it's two days, oh, my dad, you just know you have lost your daughter. That's what my mom was telling me. Because I was not breathing, nothing, no beeping, nothing. So they just kept me there. Everything, plugged every wire on my body. So when Papa mentioned it, I didn't wake up, bro. but according to my mom, there was changes. I stayed breathing. Then on Tuesday morning, huh. hey, Jesus, that was when Pastor said, Papa said, there is someone in a coma. He mentioned it. Do you know that people in coma are rising from coma? They are coming out of coma. Lord, make good your word. Make good your word. Palm of Gilead. Palm of Gilead. Palm of Gilead. We don't want to know how complicated it is. Palm of Gilead. Make good your word. And I woke up exactly at after nine. Oh, I woke up. Oh, I was. I saw my mom. My mom was crying. She was, she has, according to her, she said, it's her faith that she has already, she was wanting to, to give up. But she was like, no, she can't lose her first daughter now. That is not possible. You understand? So when I woke up, my friend said, Ada, oh yeah, NSPP, do so, you in your testimony? I said, no, mm -mm. I will go there. I will go, I will come to this church. That they are going to give me my leave. So I will come here to say, Papa, thank you very much. God is using you. If not, huh, I will not be standing here. It's a very critical condition. I was not breathing at all. But Papa said on Monday and also repeated on Tuesday, God is really working. So thank you. Oh, Glory hallelujah. To God. Glory to thank God. you, Lord. Wow. <laughs> Healing from it, asthma. I'm telling you. <laughs> wow. It's a pretty, you know, common condition, mm -hmm. but people don't realize that it's actually quite deadly. Yeah, it's, it's quite fatal. Mm. Asthma is a very fatal disease. Mm. You know, when you have to consider the, um, the organ that is affected, right. we're talking about the lungs. Okay. And the lungs um, is the center of oxygenation. Okay. So you find that all the air that we breathe in, gets into the lungs, mixes right. with the blood, and then gets um, distributed to the rest of the body. Okay. So when there's anything that actually um, hinders or prevents that oxygenation right. process, definitely it's going to cause a lot of fatal um, effects on the body. Okay, mm. so just take us through real quick you know, the science of asthma. Mm -hmm. What happens during an asthmatic attack? That's a, that's a big lecture. Uh, really? <laughs> but anyway, you said just a Quickly. quick one. So what happens is this. Asthma, first of all, is, um, uh, is an inherited disorder. Okay. Let's start from there. Okay. So what happens is that uh, people, um, it's passed from father to daughter, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. mother to child, to, to the son or any uh -huh. of those. And then there's now what you have, there's a tendency for the person to be, um, have a hypersensitivity uh -huh. to some particular things called allergens. Right. So the allergens could be cold, allergens could be dust, allergens could be um, the mold. emotions, mm -hmm. allergy could be just so mold. Many you know, so many things. Right. So when that um, person is exposed to these allergens, the allergies now exposes the mast cells. Those cells contain what you call inflammatory uh, cytokines. Uh -huh. This now causes a post inflammation. Most times, people that have some of these allergies, it's not just in the lungs that is affected, even in the skin, they have wheels, itching of the skin, redness of the eye, but we're talking about particularly in asthma. Mm. So what happens is that there's an inflammatory reaction. This inflammation causes increased 
production of mucus. If you look at that um, um, diagram, mm -hmm. you can see the normal airway. Okay. Now you can see this other airway. Look at the, so the process of inflammation causes, number one, the muscles of this, of the, those are the, called the smooth muscles. Right. They become increasingly constricted. Wow. And they cause narrowing of the airway. Right. Then you now see along those yellowish things, uh -huh. there's increased mucus production, right. which now causes still effect narrowing. of narrowing of the right. airway. So as a result of that, that narrowed airway now reduces right. the amount of air right. that gets into the lungs. So what role does the inhaler play? What the inhaler plays at the level of the smooth muscles. Okay. So the inhaler goes into the smooth muscles and causes a relaxation, uh -huh. a dilatation of the smooth muscles. Right. So they are no longer constricted. It now opens up the smooth muscles so that the airway can become more enlarged. Right. For right. then the mucus production, you now away from the inhaler. The inhaler is a bronchodilator. Uh -huh. There's also other factor, other uh, drugs that are used in asthma, like the steroids. Right. What they do that they prevent that inflammatory reaction, and then those mucus production is now also reduced. Okay, so um, I heard you mention that it's an inherited disease. It's all, yes. But um, our first testifier mentioned that you know her mother had it in adulthood. And she, you know, she got it from birth. Her grandmother had it when the father married the second wife, mm -hmm. in her words. So what is responsible for adult onset of asthma? You know, the thing is, is most of the time, uh -huh. you know, one of the things I try to um, understand, I, as, asthma is a childhood disease. Uh -huh. So it is a possibility that it could have manifested in childhood. Right. And in this, its manifestation in childhood, it's a, it's a possibility uh -huh. that maybe it could manifest in a milder form. Okay. Now, adult onset asthma is possible. Okay. It is true. Right. But also, you should also understand that as people get older, there are also some what we call cardiac asthma. Mm. Now, this cardiac asthma is not really based on the um, the pathophysiology of the allergic asthma, but this mm. one is more like person is hypertensive, has a left ventricular failure, and then you find out that it causes narrowing of the airway, mm. which is a very common disease that you find in adults. We might not be looking at the same pathology of the asthma, or this could also worsen or even uh, magnify the effect of the asthma, especially in adults. In, in adulthood. But the truth is that asthma is a childhood disease. Right. Um, it usually starts manifesting from childhood and enters into adulthood or maybe in some, it's milder in the childhood stages. Then you also have to understand is this exposure, what the child, the person is exposed to. Uh -huh. If you're exposed to what causes the asthma to be mild in childhood and then you now get exposed, maybe you start working in places like where there's exposure to dust or maybe there's a, some people migrate to places where the weather now amplifies their asthma. Right. And it seems as if that is when the asthma started. Uh, but asthma is principally a childhood disease. I've heard people often say it goes away with age. That child will outgrow asthma. Is really, that accurate? Really, really. So it's a lifelong really. condition. You know, the thing is that there are other forms of um, allergic disorders that affect the lungs. Right. There's bronchial asthma, there's hyperventilation syndromes. Right. Hyperventilation syndrome can mimic asthma and it looks as though that the person um, has asthma, but it's not from, uh, really asthma. Mm. It's not really asthma. Mm, so mm, mm. that could be what the person has. And then maybe over time, it's not having the uh, frequency of those situations. And it looks mm. as if a person has outgrown it. But really, all we can say is that the effects or the symptoms are reduced. But to say that a person outgrows asthma, asthma. no. Wow. Wow, 40-year-long yeah. asthma. This testifier has been battling with asthma, and she has severe asthma for 40 whole years. Mm. You know, the beauty of her testimony is that she, um, the word came in 2021, mm -hmm. and she's testifying in 2023. 23. Two years later, for someone that was prone to asthmatic attacks, she's here testifying that that has not reoccurred again since the word went forth. Not just that, but also um, hypersensitivity, hyper, you know, she had 
so many allergies. She was prone to allergic reactions. Her teeth were falling out. I don't know what that is about. Do you have any comments on that? You know, the thing is that I, I love the way God operates. Okay. He's, um, God, you know, he doesn't just um, leave, um, leave, he doesn't leave any stone unturned. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So God knows that allergies cause asthma. And he knows that asthma can be fatal. So what did God do? First of all, God healed the asthma. Uh -huh. But in case this asthma wants to come back again and allergies are provoked, what did God do? He healed her of any form of sensitivity to allergies. Right, right. So you see, it wow. was... <laughs> if wow. you look at it from that perspective. Right. So he didn't just heal her from no. the asthma, no. which is the end result right. of sensitization to wow. allergies. So God, first of all, there was a care. word for the Glory. problem, but Hallelujah. what are those factors that mm. will provoke you to get to that mm. level? God took care of he them. He took care of it as well. As well. Wow, <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> testimonies. So she's free in one day. Three different words. words. Asthma, hypersensitivity, hypersensitivity. teeth falling out. out. You know, in you know, one day, any one person. God addressed and all lifelong issues. She yes. had it all of her life. You need to understand that asthma is um, is is a limiting, is a life altering it's condition. Is a life altering condition. You can imagine her grandma had to build a house and live beside, live the, beside hospital. the hospital. You know, you are to tied to your inhaler. You can't go anywhere. You know, you're <clears throat> cautious about where you go to, where you eat. And, you know, it's just a life-altering condition. And God has healed her and And, you know, I, I, I want to use the opportunity to, um, as much as we are, you know, the thing about um, we, we are on the strange acts of God and then we are on the altar of fire. But the thing is that one of the biggest challenges, you know, the, the death rate of asthma has actually reduced. Mm. Before it was about 15 fold. Now it has reduced wow. to about 10, 5, 7 to 8 to 10 wow. fold. Why? Because now people now, they have, we have medicine, medical practice has developed an action, asthma action plan. So most times when people do not adhere to the action plan, especially one of the things I find out is that inhaler use. A lot of people do not know how to use their inhalers. The inhaler is not swallowed. The inhaler, you put the inhaler in your mouth and then you swallow it. Or they expect to use, maybe there are two types of inhaler. You have the reliever inhaler and then you have the controller inhaler. Mm. You don't use the controller inhaler during an acute symptom. Ah. You use the reliever inhaler during an acute symptom. Right. But the challenge that we have in most cases is that people do not even know. They do not know how to use their inhaler. Wow. You know? I, I, I had the opportunity of asking somebody to use an inhaler and the person say, um, Doc, I just press it to my face. <laughs> <laughs> and he was pressing the inhaler to his face. Wow. How, do, how do you get... Do, okay, he said, sorry. He's like this. <laughs> That person has not had a crisis before. He's never had a crisis before. Mm. So that's the truth. So the point is that patient education right. is central to avoiding such situations where the person have the risk of death mm. with asthmatic crisis. Wow. And it's very important for us to educate our patients, or educate clients, educate our um, loved ones, the need for us to be inhaler technique. Inhaler technique mm. is one very important tool that can prevent death in asthmatic Situations. Right here on the altar of fire. Fire is preventing, <laughs> preventing it. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. 40-year-old long affliction rolled away <laughs> in one day. And that's the beauty of the altar, altar of fire. fire. It doesn't matter how long you have had it. That everlasting door will be brought Amen. down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Our fourth affliction. Fifth and final testimony for today comes all the way from Calabar yet again, Cross River, mm -hmm. Nigeria. Princess Alice Daniel testifying on behalf of her son, a divine turnaround. We'll be right back. I want to thank God for what God has done. Remove shame from my face. My third son has been a torment ever since I took him. Right in the womb was a problem, was war. Even to the birth of the child, I know what I passed through. 
He has been a torment in my life. He steals anything he sees. He corrects me and my husband. He threatens us with knife. He smokes anything smokable and drinks. Sometimes comes back home. When I now lost, finally lost my husband, he will fall in the parlor and vomit. If you talk, it's a problem when he recovers the following day. If I calls me a witch, that I am the one that made him not to progress in life, I'm the one that made his life to be the way he is, he goes outside, he stands outside the gate and abuses me. Towards the ending of August, I was on the altar of fire. I think that was the third or fourth day. I joined the altar of fire again. And Pastor Jerry had the word of the Lord. And he said, your third son, they removed the brain of, they removed his brain and put the brain of a goat. Look at where his destiny has been exchanged with the destiny of a goat. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. I announce, let it be reversed by fire. And there and there I knew it was my son Godwin because his behavior does not show like a human being, more especially for not cleaning up himself, for not batting at all. Goats does not have anything to do with water. He clicked immediately. That is my son. I stood up. I jumped. I said, it's Godwin. Godwin is my son. I put it on the lights. And to my greatest surprise, the following morning, first thing in the morning, I saw him. He entered. He woke up. This somebody that does not even wake. And he will sleep till 11, 12, 1, 2. Some days, the whole day is in the room. Or he will go out and just move out, go and drink, come back. No, no, no aim. This one entered the bathroom and cleaned himself up. The following day, he stood up, he did the same thing. The third day, he stood up, he did the same thing. And after three days of that first day, the word of the goat brain, Pastor Jerry came up again and said, your son steals anything. He can even steal a candy in the supermarket. Why are you stealing? Why are you stealing? Why are you stealing? How about you steal everything? You steal everything. What manner of demonic spirit? You steal the things you can even afford. You steal it. You steal even up to stealing candies. Which you were embarrassed of. Even in the supermarket. You steal. You steal. I command. Let this power. Let it be broken. Because why? He steals everything you can think about. Sell everything. Is it shoe? Is it my canvas? Is it tracksuit? Is it clothes? Is it money? Is it jewelries? Is it generator? What is it that I want to talk about? The shop I opened for him, he sold everything. I does not even sell it, the word of what that thing is. If it's something of 16,000, he can let go for 1,005. That was what the enemy made him to be just to go and smoke it. But after a few days, I was surprised in the evening. One of the days I was listening to God have mercy. He now came and said, I should give him the phone. I gave it to him. He listened to God have mercy. And he told me, Mommy, if this man is a man of God, tomorrow he will mention me. I'm going to join you. I didn't talk. I knew that the Lord has done it. And that tomorrow he came. And there was also a word for him. God mentioned what he was passing through. I can't remember what it is. He jumped up. And since that day to today, he has been on the altar of fire with me. He cleaned his room cleaned himself up, washes things, he washes even my clothes, goes to the market, enter the kitchen. And before I leave, I want you to see the man that the enemy wanted to rob the kingdom of God of. Indeed, what God cannot do does not exist. Yes. Daddy, Pastor Jerry, thank you so much. I really appreciate. Words are not enough to express how I feel. At least you've given me back hope and make me come back to life again. 
because I knew the life I was living wasn't really coming out of me, but I could not help myself. But to God be the glory, I'm back to life. Pastor Jerry, thank you for answering this call thank without you, looking God. back. Thank you, May Daddy. God Almighty meet you at the point of your need. May you not run dry. May you not run tired. May the strength in you and speed in you Amen. not go down. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What God cannot do does, does not, not exist. exist. <laughs> Thank oh you, Lord. Oh Thank God. you, Lord. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Divine oh my turn God. around. Divine turn around. Glory to God. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You know, Pastor Nalong, I remember, I can't remember what it was that we, I sat down with you here and we were talking about um, addictions. And then we said, we established something that if something has to be repetitive, an mm. action has to be repetitive, there's a spirit involved. Mm. It's not just a physical mm, action. Mm, there mm. must be a spirit involved. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I, I, I had a little concern about a statement she made about this child being a problem child from the womb. And it got me thinking, because I know that every good and perfect gift mm -hmm, comes from God. Mm -hmm. So it got me thinking, um, are children really problem children from birth? Or are there environmental, social, and mental, you know, issues surrounding them that is responsible for their outcome? Are there children that are just naturally defiant? Yeah, you know, the thing is that um, I wouldn't want to put it that way mm. because the point is that um, we're, in, we're, we're in a spirit world. Mm. And the thing is that the personality of the child has to play a part in lots of things. Mm -hmm. You find a child of about one year or two years and mm. the child is already knowing how to say shege. <laughs> environment though, environment. environment. Yeah, but the thing is that there's a, an environment that the child aligns to. Mm. There could also be a child in that environment, in the mm. same still environment that mm. does not align to such things, mm. despite being exposed to them. Mm. So yes, it's um, the environmental factors have a lot to play. Mm -hmm. Role models, who are the children learning from? Mm -hmm. Especially when they're in an environment where some of these things are predominant. Mm -hmm. You f definitely find out that they'll tend towards such pathways. Mm -hmm. But you see, the thing is that I also believe that, you know, this thing, the Bible says that there's a spirit in man. Mm -hmm. There's a spirit in mm. man. So there's a spirit in the child. Mm. So that spirit in child, you know, as the child is growing, I believe that it can be able to like, um, you know, like the Bible's talked about Cain. Mm. He said Cain had the nature, mm. had the nature. the nature. Now the question is that at what point did the nature of the devil get into him? Mm. So could it be at the point of when he was one year old? Mm. <laughs> was it when he was two years mm. old. So it's the nature. We have the nature of God. Mm. That's why we are doing the things we are doing. There right. are some children that have the nature of the devil, even at a very tender age. And back to the environment. <laughs> a door has been opened because children are clean slates. Yeah. They don't come that way. But that's the discussion for another, another day. day. <laughs> <laughs> that's the discussion for another day. So now we see, you know, this child is drinking. So is this a drug issue? Because I'm seeing a lot of, you know, drug behavior. Mm. You know, I'm seeing a lot of drug behavior with the stealing, you know, with the passing out and vomiting and irrational behavior, selling things at, you know, worth 10,000, you're selling it for 50 kobo. That's a lot of drug behavior. Would you say this is still a spirit, mm. you know, related thing? Or is this kleptomania? Is this a drug? What's your take on it? You know, this? the thing is that whatever name you call it, that mm. spirit parts, you cannot, you cannot, um, uh, perpetuate a thing mm. and um, continue in a habit if there's no spirit behind it. Mm. So that's on one part. Now, this is a progression for me, mm. a progression from a childhood deviant behavior mm -hmm. disorder that now progressed into adulthood. The child now starts manifesting some adult um, uh, deviations from social norms. Mm. Now, this child According to the mother, the child has been a problem child. Mm. That is one thing for me to say that this child has some deviant behaviors mm. or disorders. Now, the child now grew into the, pos the position where environment mm. comes in. P 
peer pressure comes mm. in, um, um, role model, who is teaching this mm. child, what mm. is this Exposure. child exposed to, mm. and then next thing the child now, the deviant behavior now turns him into this negative trend ah. of alcoholism, drinking. Now, kleptomania on one part, kleptomaniacs, are, they don't need this thing. Right. They just have this pilfering spirit right. <laughs> tendency. Right. They go to a place and all they want to do is to pick stuffs that right. they don't even need wow. and steal them. Wow. Now, but this particular boy needs, from what my own understanding is, he needs the money. Right. He needs fast cash right. to be able to like maintain and promote his addictions right he needs to drink he needs to take drugs and all that and he needs anything that can fetch him ready cash to be able to like exchange for what he needs to maintain the addictive behavior mm, you know the beauty of the you know the one of the beauties about the holy spirit is that he knows how to communicate to us in a language that we will understand yes. and so the word came forth and what stood out to the mother was when she heard um, you know, brain of a goat. Brain of a and goat. said, you know what, my son hates water. My son my, hates he, water. he can't even take his bath. Yes. In the morning. He goes days, yes. days without taking his bath. Yes. And then we hear her, you know, she receives the word mm. and all of a sudden, this boy, I mean, look at him. He's a man even. A I'm man. Sure close to his 40s. Yes. You know, the dream of every mother is to raise her child and then, you know, sow seeds and, you know, with hopes that there will be harvest in future. Mm -hmm. But here you have a child that is near 40, mm -hmm. thereabout, is still living with you. And rather than being a blessing and a crown on your head, like the Bible says, he's a nuisance and an inconvenience to your life. And a threat. And a threat to your life, too, because he's attacking. Attacking her, threat, you know, yes. with knives. Where mm. do you go to ordinarily with conditions such as this? But then a word came forth and a near 40-year-old affliction was also was broken. broken. And the point, the truth about the whole thing, that the young man caught the word for himself. Right. So it's no more about what his mother, as in mother being on the altar of fire, uh -huh. this man is now on the altar of fire Glory for himself. So you can be sure that whatever it is that has started will be reinforced. Amen. You know, one spirit, the strange spirit has left him. Mm. A new spirit has entered into mm. him. And that spirit is the spirit of perfection. Wow. What have we heard today? <laughs> you know, the Bible says God is a multi-breasted one. And we've seen such a wide range, a wide, wide spectrum range. of testimonies from the asthma to the strange afflictions, mm -hmm. the mm. maggots, and what have you. And now we see a defiant child being restored. At this age, there's no talking to this boy. You no. can't talk to him. He's no, past no, the no, age no, of no. talking. Talking. No, so no. you need something stronger than your speech, you know, and glory to God, you know, his mother said a word on the altar and here we are today. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What our God cannot do it does, really does not, not exist. exist. Dr. Kelechi, thank you so much thank for you your so time. Much. Thank, thank you so much for <laughs> being with us today. Do you have parting words for our viewers? You know, uh, much as um, just like you said, um, there's so much that we've seen from this, um, from the testimonies that we've uh, talked about. But you know, the part of the change, the, 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 the man, the transformation in the human life. Mm. And um, you know, the, this young man, from the addictions and everything, and to the fact where this young man is now in the place where God can reach out to him. I can tell you that that is the most important part of the altar of fire. Glory. That is the most important part. We, yes, we celebrate the testimonies of the healings, we testimony the testimonies of the immigrations and everything. But the truth about the whole thing is that, that this is an opportunity for people to be able to like annex themselves with the God that created them, the God that gave them this life. I think I want to just, like the last, the woman said, I want to thank God to, for Pastor Jerry. Hmm. He's our hero. Hmm. He's truly our hero. Hmm. He's bringing to us in this time that understanding of what our purpose and our role is, which is to bring men back to this God. Hmm. Yeah. 
I celebrate him. Yes, we celebrate him again and again and again. Pastor Jerry, what a blessing you are to this world. I wonder where our four testifiers today would have gone to, yeah. if not for NSPPD, if not for Pastor Jerry's ministry, if not for all that God is doing through him. So we continually celebrate you. And like we say, the oil on your head will forever, Never. it will forever multiply yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Where else would you rather be on a Monday morning than on NSPPD? Monday through till Friday, NSPPD continues. 7 a.m. Nigerian time. Come back and join us. Do not come back alone. The Strange Acts of God continues Saturday morning, 7 a.m. Nigerian time. Come back and join us and grab a friend to come join us as well. Do you have a testimony of your own? Go ahead and send in your testimony to the testimony number written at the bottom of the screen and be a blessing to someone else. Have you clicked on the share button? Go ahead and click on the share button. Share to a WhatsApp group. Let them know that God is still in the business of doing the impossible. Are you following us across all of our social media handles? Go ahead and search for Streams of Joy International. Like and subscribe so that you never miss a show, you never miss a prayer meeting, you never miss a service. You're up to date with all that God is doing in this house in the now. That brings us to the end of yet another show. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so Thank much you to so our much. guest for <laughs> gracing our Thank set today. So we are so grateful, sir. Thank, Thank you so, you much, so much. Thank you. That brings us to the end of our show. See you next week, Saturday. But till then, remember, what our God cannot do does not, does not, not exist. exist.